Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining in. Welcome to the final session, but an extremely important session of CISA conference, which is education regulators. Uh, before we begin, I want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the country throughout Australia, their diversity, histories and knowledge and their continuing connection to lands, waters and communities. We pay our respects to all Australian indigenous people, their culture and to elders of past, present and future generation. This session is sponsored by Innovative Research Universities, which is a coalition of seven comprehe comprehensive universities committed to inclusive excellence as teaching, learning and research in Australia. Their membership is uh, Charles Darwin University, Flinders University, Griffith University, James Cook University, Latrobe University, Murdoch University and Western Sydney University. Uh, for this very important session with me, I have got uh, Professor Nick Saunders, who is Chief Commissioner and Acting Chief Executive Officer at TEXA. And I have also got with me Mr. Craig Robertson, who is Chief Executive Officer for TAFE Directors Australia. In this session, we would be talking about the um, importance and how uh, education regulators support international students. And they are often behind the scenes, but um, we want to make international students aware about their existence and how they support international students and the education sector. Um, with that, I'll hand it over to Professor Nick to um, carry on. Good. Thanks very much, Millie, and thanks for providing uh, me and uh, the staff of TEXA to be able to participate in this very important conference that you uh, hold each year, and we are always. Uh, pleased to be invited to participate and to come along and um, share thoughts and ideas and answer questions that uh, international students um, throughout Australia might might have for us. Let me just see if I can use the technology properly and if I can um, uh, share my screen with you. Um, I'll just click on that and share. Hopefully that's there and then I can click on here and I should have my presentation working for you. Good. Good. So look, um, Millie's asked me to just say a few words about TEXA. Um, as, I'm sitting, uh, as I've been sitting here waiting to come onto the conference, I realise that there's a, a spelling error in the, uh, the email address for inquiries that should have E-N-Q-U-I-R-I-E-S rather than inquires, but um, be that as it may, TEXA stands for the Tertiary Education Quality and Standards Agency. And I thought I'd just put up some contact details um, uh, for you so that if you need to contact us and we're keen to be uh, interacting with students, then you have a, a, you know, a way of, of, of getting um, to our front door, so to speak. So if you just if you just typed in TEQSA and Googled it, that would get you to our homepage, and from there our our, um, uh, our contact details are easy to find. But there's a phone line that you can call that will always be answered. Um, there's an inquiries email address that's shown there, and as well as that, there's our our web web address. So who are we? Well, we're, we're an independent. Commonwealth Government Agency. Uh, we have close relationships with the Department of Education, but we're independent of the Department of Education. Um, TEXA reports directly to the Minister of Edu uh, for Education in Australia, and we do our work um, in collaboration with, but independent of the, the department. Um, our objects are really to protect and enhance your interests, students' interests, both domestic and international students, as well as protecting and enhancing the higher education sector more generally in terms of its quality and, and reputation. We have specific responsibility under the ESOS Act, the Education Services for Overseas Students Act, um, to um, ensure that international students studying in Australia, studying higher education in Australia, um, is, uh, are, are well uh, looked after. So we are responsible for administering that, that part of the ESOS Act that deals with um, uh, higher education. And through being the national regulator, 
uh, and I, I'll get a chance to talk some more when Millie gets to question time, but students can be confident that uh, because they need to be registered with um, TEXA to deliver higher education in Australia, students can be confident that all Australian higher education providers meet the higher education standards framework. And that standards framework is there to ensure that uh, quality is, um, is provided uh, to the students that are studying, be they at universities or private colleges. Some TAFEs also offer higher education. And of course, there are some English language providers who provide, um, who are linked to TEXA as well. Uh, as I said, we're, we're keen to, to hear from students. Um, we have a, a, a student expert advisory group that we meet with um, three times or so a year. And through meeting with that group, we get a high level understanding of what um, uh, students are um, experiencing uh, throughout Australia in terms of higher education. And the, um, the leader of CESA is actually a member of that student expert advisory group. And, and the membership of CESA has been really terrific over the last um, three years or so in terms of bringing the international student voice to, uh, to our attention. And we've really enjoyed the way in which the, the CESA representative has in fact been, um, been able to bring to us some issues and concerns of international students that we've then been able to work um, on. Um, students can contact us to say good things and, and, and not so good things. So if you have a, a, a concern or a complaint about a provider, uh, you, um, you, there's, there's a portal that you can access. Um, we have close links with the Overseas Student Ombudsman, and so uh, we have a good understanding between the Ombudsman's office and ourselves. So that's another way in which he, we keep um, tuned in to international students. And if students have concerns and complaints, and again, Millie may give me the opportunity to say something more in a moment through questions, but if, if you do have a complaint, it is important that you feel confident enough to, um, to share that with us. And we're seeking to um, build networks with students. So we need your help to promote knowledge of TEXA to students. Um, as Millie said, we're behind the scenes, we're in the background. Uh, not a lot of students don't know about our existence and yet we're here to make sure that you're getting a good experience. So please, please uh, do take that opportunity if you have concerns or, or worries. Uh, at the moment, we're particularly interested in understanding about students' experience of online learning during the first semester when COVID-19 hit. A lot of providers didn't have a lot of experience with online teaching, and so we provided them with a, as much support and help as we could in, in getting quality online learning underway. It was a bit hit and miss. I think everybody uh, agrees with that. Um, but we'd be interested now to, to hear from you, uh, both through the Student Expert Advisory Group that's meeting at the end of this month, but also we're developing a little survey that we'll put up probably in, uh, in, in uh, August, late August, uh, to hear about your experiences with online learning. So if you, if you go to our website in about a month's time, you, you'll find it easily uh, to be able to navigate to get to that, uh, that short survey and, and let us know your own thoughts and experiences about online learning. But let me tell you again, we're, we're here to support students and so uh, we encourage you to keep in contact with us. We have an information page for our students um, and uh, th that's sitting on the left hand side of the screen. Um, so if you were to just go on to our homepage, type in information students, it'll take you to that, that particular page. And that page then has links to a whole range of other resources. On the right hand side, I've just got some examples there. We have some very helpful information about COVID-19 and links across to other relevant um, 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 websites and uh, information resources. Uh, we have a, a services to assist section on, in, on those pages, which provides you with all sorts of information about the way in which Texa might be able to assist you. And we also have resources um, 
available. For example, just last week, we've released, published on our website, our good practice guide for providers in relationship to sexual assault and sexual harassment. But there are a whole host of other resources there that students may find of, of interest and help. So I'll stop there, Millie. Um, thanks for giving me the chance to give a brief uh, introduction and I look forward to talking with you with the questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Nick. Uh, now we'd hear from uh, Mr. Craig Robertson a little bit about uh, the organization he's the Chief Executive Officer of. Craig. Uh, thank you, Millie, and um, I will now try to demonstrate my uh, expertise in, or lack of it in using Zoom, but here we go. And just let me do that. I'm just trying to get on to. So, uh, uh, so I'm the Chief Executive Officer for um, TAFE Directors Australia. So unlike um, Nick, I'm a representative body. I represent all the TAFEs uh, across Australia. There's about 25 to 26 of them, and there's all that, and that includes. Um, some TAFE divisions of dual sector universities, such as RMIT, Swinburne, uh, Victoria University, um, I'm going to forget what, uh, Federation University, Charles Darwin University, and Central Queensland University. Um, and as Nick was saying, TAFEs deliver primarily vocational education and training, but they do deliver a higher education um, and they have quite a number of students in. Um, uh, in higher education programs in TAFE. So if you were to do, to choose a, a, a TAFE, why would you come to TAFE? Um, primarily you'd be coming to TAFE to uh, acquire skills and knowledge that would prepare you for um, a, a career within um, an industry uh, sector. So TAFE's focus quite strongly on preparing you with the practical skills, but the underpinning knowledge uh, to be able to do a whole range of jobs um, throughout uh, the economy. Now, of course, it's important that uh, the training that you get helps you to get a job here in Australia, if indeed you're gonna take some work rights coming uh, after the study. But equally, they are important skills and knowledge um, that you can take home with you. What I'm gonna do in this slide is to sort of show you um, how the assurance landscape operates within Australia. Now I've titled this slide Proceeding with Confidence because I'm particularly alert to all international students in Australia uh, must have some degree of um, uncertainty or concern about what is the, the future for them in the context of COVID. And as Nick has outlined through government regulation, government support, it's primarily focused on making sure that you can engage in your education and training experience with confidence because there's assurance there for you. And so in this diagram I've got here for higher education, of course, the regulation, which is around the quality of the training experience or the educational experience, plus also um, the interests of students through the higher education standards, as Nick mentioned, um, are really have oversight from TEXA. If you're doing a vocational education and training program, however, and again, you could be at a TAFE for doing that, there is a, um, uh, a sister organisation for TEXA called ASQA, the Australian Skills Quality Authority. Um, and they have similar roles um, uh, to TEXA in terms of making sure that delivery is of high quality, and the interests of students are uh, front and centre for all training um, organisations. And I do know that um, TEXA and ASQA, particularly during this period of upheaval as a result of COVID, have worked together very closely to be able to make sure uh, that there is alignment between the approaches to, um, uh, to regulation and assurance in uh, providers for international students. So, for example, in VET, for example, um, ASQA has given uh, good advice about flexibility to be able to move courses um, online and to be delivered uh, flexibly uh, online. 
and that's been very similar to the work that uh, Texa has done. So what I wanted to mention to you, regardless of whether you are with um, a TAFE or a university, which, tend, which are government owned and backed, or whether you are with a non-government um, education or training provider, um, Texa and ASQA oversights them in a similar way. Um, so um, there is no, so that you, there is assurance for you, regardless of the provider uh, whom you go with. What I'm wanting to do for you is what will happen if uh, in the rare cases, what we are anticipating is gonna happen, there might be some issues with your vet training organization. Now I need to, um, uh, talk through very quickly of what, of the about 160,000 students who are studying in Australia in a vocational education and training course, the bulk of them are with a, a non-TAFE provider. Um, but I wanted to be able to show you, uh, regardless uh, of what happens if there are, if you reach some particular challenge with your provider, we have in Australia one of the um, uh, better schemes across the world called the Tuition Protection Service. Um, and that Tuition Protection Service uh, is called upon if in the unfortunate circumstances uh, your training organisation needs to close. What that Tuition Protection Service does is come in, make sure that your records are secure, um, they make contact with you, and then they organise for another training organisation to be able to come through and uh, receive your enrolment um, and then continue on in your enrolment. And TAFEs are part of that scheme as well. So if in the event of some closure, unfortunate though that is, uh, there is a good scheme to be able to make sure that you can transition across. Your fees are protected. Uh, and so you don't need to pay uh, additional fees in those circumstances. What if there are issues with uh, your study? Um, in the first instance, the priority really is to go to your training organisation or to your institute. They have obligations under the standards that they operate under to be able to operate within your interests. Um, and they should be adaptable in that way. If, however, uh, you don't get that interest, you have these options to be able to go to the Overseas Student Ombudsman um, that Nick mentioned and there's the, um, the, the website there. Uh, but also ASQA and TEXA have call centres where they can uh, receive inquiries from, um, uh, from students to be able to look after you. What I can indicate to you during this real period of um, upheaval and Caesar Executive have been uh, central in this. The federal government in the early days uh, of COVID had established uh, what they call a global reputation task force um, under the leadership of um, uh, primarily uh, Minister Tian, the federal minister. And um, leaders from the sector gathered actually weekly to be able to make sure that there was coordination and support for international students. And we are particularly aware of the disruption where many of you have lost access to work. Um, and I know, for example, some of the institutes that I represent, TAFE Queensland, for example, has, has instituted uh, food drives and the like to be able to make sure um, that that is available. And most states and territories now have put in support mechanisms to help you continue with your study, albeit online, but also to be able to manage to um, um, maintain your rent and also um, uh, and also to be able to get get food. What we pride ourselves here in Australia is that uh, we we put the student at the centre, and our commitment is to be able to make sure that it is a good stay here in Australia, and particularly if you might stay on for um, some work rights afterwards. We hope that the government is close to making some announcements around um, visa conditions and the like. One of the things that we as an association does, along with organisations like the Universities Australia, 
and the sponsoring organisation for this session is we advocate to government to be able to make sure that some of these things work for the interest of students. Um, if you need any assistance and you're perhaps not getting anywhere, you can always come into TAFE Directors Australia um, on that website there. Um, and this is now a shameless uh, advertisement, uh, but if you want to follow us, that's where you can follow us on, um, on all of the social media um, channels um, as well. Uh, so let's be friends, hopefully, as, um, uh, as we go forward. One of the most important things, of course, is the exchange, the collaboration that can occur from an international experience. And that's our commitment from TAFE, so that we want you to be embedded within our classes with, us, with Australians. And if there is work placements that you need to do, that you do that alongside um, uh, our other students who are in, um, in TAFE. Uh, and so um, we hope at some point you'll tell your friends overseas, consider TAFE if you want to come to Australia. And at that note, I'll say thanks very much and willing to take questions. Thank you so much, Craig. Um, so I'll ask a question to Nick. Um, how does TEXA monitor risks to students and um, how does TEXA assist when a university shuts down or if a student is facing some issue around their fee refunds? Um, for example, right now with the online thing, um, online uh, change, um, if someone has been charged but they change their course and like there are lots of complications. So how, how can TEXA assist here? Sure. Well, thanks, Millie. So first of all, how do we monitor risks to students? Well, each year we do an analysis of all the higher education providers in Australia. There are about, there are about 180 higher education providers. And each year we take information that we've either collected ourselves or the department has collected through its own processes. And we do an analysis of that, um, of that information. And one of the major things that we look at is in fact to do with student um, risk. And we do that by looking at, first of all, a provider's um, student outcomes. How are the students progressing in their studies? Are students dropping out in the first year of their, of their studies? after graduation are the students able to um, uh, to find work and, and, and the like. So we are particularly interested in student outcomes and of course a provider that has poor pass rates for its students, students are dropping out frequently, students are graduating and not being able to find jobs, then we take a particular interest in those um, sorts of providers in terms of then making sure that they're providing the quality that's uh, required. We look at the quilt data that um, students uh, complete the surveys and we look both from the student experience as well as the graduate experience. And so student satisfaction is also a very important indicator for us. And then we also look at, um, at staffing. Um, are the staff uh, numbers are sufficient? Is there sufficient seniority? Uh, amongst the staff and we do that on an annual analysis on an annual basis as well and it's it's through that we're then able to rate um, uh, student uh, providers I should say according to student risk as low uh, moderate or, or high risk and, and students will be pleased to know uh, that there are very few providers in Australia who are rated at the moment at high risk um, to, uh, to students. It would be less than 10% of the, of the entire um, sector, higher education sector, where that sort of uh, concern is, is, is being found. Um, how else do we find out about, um, about how students are perceiving their experience and how they're getting on? Well, students, of course, can make complaints to Texel. I've already said that. Um, and uh, our, our approach here is to make sure that we listen respectfully to the complaint, make sure that the complaint is relevant in terms of relating to a higher education provider, because sometimes students come to us when they really should be going to, as Craig said, our sister organisation, ASQA. So we make sure it's relevant. 
we then make sure that the students have tried to sort the problem out with their own institution. Um, the higher education standards require every higher education institution to have a fair and easily accessible uh, complaints and grievance processes so that students do have an opportunity to, to be heard within their institution. And so we make sure that the students, as best we can, the students have, have accessed that, made their grievances known. But if they're still not satisfied having done that, that they've had a fair hearing and they understand the outcome, they can make a, a, express their concern or make a complaint to us. And what we do there is, um, it's first important um, to recognise that we can't sort of look into matters like an individual student's discontent with the marks that they've or the grades that they've been been given uh, we, we can't do that we just we need to make sure that the provider has an, a, a process where those sorts of appeals can be made and if they have we have to leave it there but there are some there are some issues which point to a systemic a, a general problem with that might might be present in that provider and particularly if a number of complaints come in about a provider about the same thing, well, that's something that we can look into in terms of the provider's own processes, its own governance, those, those sorts of things. And if there are problems there, uh, we, will, we will act. Now, Millie pointed to the change from going from face to face to online and how that affected students. The vast majority of providers actually behave very very professionally and very responsibly, tried to explain to the students what were happening and then gave them a, a, a fair uh, choice in terms of whether they wanted to stay on and undertake their studies online or whether they wanted to withdraw from their studies or seek um, to study at another institution. Um, and that involved looking at the contract that the student had with the provider and of course if they move from face to face to online the contract has changed and so the provider had an obligation to deal with the matter fairly. Uh, as I say most providers have pe performed very fairly but there have been some providers where that has been a problem. That was brought to our attention, it also was brought to the overseas um, uh, students ombudsman's attention we went to those providers and we said to them, you have to treat the, the students more fairly uh, than that. So we, do, we can take action, we do take action, but by and large, you know, we're, Australia is very fortunate to have a very high quality higher education system and the vast majority of the providers in that system for the vast majority of time are acting or seeking to act in the best interests of the students that, that are studying there including international students. So Millie, I might, I might leave it there. Thank you, Nick. Um, just wanted to mention, so there are some Q&A on our, um, our attendees. So you guys can feel free to type in the answer. Uh, and there is one question which I would like to come back to you, Nick, and ask later. Um, in the meantime, for you, um, Craig, I have this question that, um, during this pandemic, it's been such a big change. This is something nobody expected. And suddenly we have learned to get uh, tech savvy. We have learned to get used to it. Um, but unfortunately, during this pandemic and uh, stressful time, there has been lots of grievances from uh, students, um, especially from wet and tape sector. And it has been around maybe cancellation of their COEs or other uh, issues like that how exactly can um, TDA help with this and what kind of help is available okay so the first thing that's occurred is um, all providers in vocational education and training have obviously had to follow health guidance um, and close down um, uh, their face-to-face -face classes but, but I can speak particularly for TAFEs. They have worked amazingly well to put in place uh, connected learning. Um, from our viewpoint, there may well be some issue from students saying, well, I came to Australia for um, a face-to-face -face, um, experience and now I'm doing this in a connected way. 
um, I would like to have some discount on um, my fees, for example. Well, that's certainly a TAFE by TAFE and provider by, by provider um, undertaking. But what I can assure all students, and we have done surveys of this across our TAFEs, um, they, we haven't put students online and said, let's forget about you. It's really been what we like to call connected learning. We would love to have all students in on campus. We all love that vibrancy of life um, on campus. We love um, the mix of cultures and backgrounds and, and the like, but unfortunately we can't do that. But what the tapes have done, have done a variety of mechanisms to be able to make sure that people are connected in their learning experience through um, Zoom. Um, I've heard, for example, the commercial cookery classes, they get sent a pack of, um, of the ingredients and they're all online learning new um, cooking techniques and uh, things like that. Even those that are doing enrolled nursing and the like are sent uh, a wounds pack and here they are bounding up there doing their wounds and the like so um, even though it's on it's uh, virtual you're still learning those um, those practical skills but look we do um, accept that there may be some um, enrollments that have been cancelled and really that's the purpose of the tuition protection scheme but what I can offer to all students online is make contact with the student support area of the TAFE, even if you are with a private provider, um, because it's mainly those student support centre staff who can look at your current program, look at what you've completed, can understand what you're trying to do and then say, well, we could suggest that you could go to this organisation or this or come and enrol with us to be able to continue on with um, with um, your study and I get that's the important message to to give to all students that we're trying to assure your um, um, that you can continue on with the experience of training and education which was the purpose you came to Australia for thank you Craig um, so in conclusion I'd just like to pass this message to all the students um, do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, organizations like TEXA, TDA, ESQA, they are there to help us. Um, just want to highlight here that we know that we are from different cultural backgrounds because of which we might be hesitant about reaching out. Uh, but if you feel comfortable to reach out to CESA and then we can put you in touch with that, do that. But if you see or if you are unsure what's happening and what is not happening do reach out so we can be there and we can assess you um in the meantime just one question from the audience for you uh nick somebody asked what advice would you give to international students whose provider will not accommodate any flexibility with tuition fee payment um who are forcing students to take intermission or threatening to cancel their coe um, however, many providers are unwilling to negotiate. Uh, are all institutions and in provider default given that all courses are being taught online and not? I'm sorry, it's a very long question. So, um, so Millie, perhaps I could just say this: that the law is very clear about this. The 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 code of um, practice that that sits underneath the uh, the ESOS Act is very clear on this, and that. If, the, if a student's contract is changed, then the provider has certain responsibilities and must enter into discussions with the student in good faith. And if the student wants to do something that the provider is refusing and says, oh, we're not going to do that, and I'm going to keep your money, and if you don't like it, that's tough, students should let us know because that provider is not meeting the standards that are required and we have the powers to make the provider do that. It's important to realize that, um, you know, everything has to be done on a case by case basis. But if a provider is treating its, its students poorly in this regard, uh, then we need to know about it so that we can look into it ourselves and make an independent judgment and if necessary, take action. So at the end, it is about that we do not hesitate and we do reach out. And um, 
there are links in the chat box for everyone to uh, explore, understand what the organization do. And if you have any questions which are going on in your mind right now, you can drop it to the inquiry or contact us section. Um, just from my end, uh, uh, either of you, Nick or Craig, uh, one question that I'd like to ask at the end is, um, supposedly there is a student who has enrolled but is offshore at the moment, um, and they have been encouraged to go for online studies. But one of their subjects or one of the course, they need to have in-person examination. And because of the travel restriction, the student can't come in. What, what the student needs to do in such case? Craig? Uh, that's, that's for me. So if they have to do, so they want to do it offshore, start online offshore. Um, let's say they're in their second or third trimester. <laughs> they yes, are yes. offshore. It's just one of those situations where they went to the home, to their home, but they didn't uh, come back. Oh, okay. All right. So um, what one of the, natural limitations that even ASQA has some, um, uh, it doesn't really have authority to change is some of the specific requirements of, um, of qualifications that require some practical demonstration of, um, of skills. Um, or for example, they've got to be able to do it in an Australian workplace. Uh, the only thing I could suggest that if those, if they are situations that some students are facing, um, I think if they contact their provider, particularly if they they are a TAFE, and one of the things that we do is we have regular dialogue with the regulators. Um, like it would be, it would be most unfortunate if we said you couldn't complete your studies um, because you were um, offshore um, and it was going to be cost prohibitive uh, to be able to come back to Australia uh, to do that. So I think it would be a case by case instance, but mm -hmm. I can assure you that the both, uh, both regulators have been um, uh, very adaptable and flexible um, and they would, they would really take into account the particular circumstances that student or those students are undertaking, uh, are in at the moment. Thank you, Craig. Um, would you like to go ahead with the, Q and A. I understand you would like to answer them live. Oh, so I was trying to answer uh, one that came in at four forty-eight. For TAFE courses, the rates are higher for international students. Are there special rates and terms for us at this time? I do know that some TAFEs have looked at their current um, uh, course fees um, and have been offering uh, some discounts. Uh, and also they are looking at, for students going into semester two, um, about uh, freezing current um, uh, course uh, rate, uh, current course fees uh, at this particular time. And of course, we're just not sure what's gonna happen in 2021, uh, uh, given um, ongoing restrictions with, um, uh, with travel. Yeah. Millie, there's one here from an international student from India who's enrolled for the July 2020 intake and has uh, been now moved online study due to the border restrictions and his, um, he or she is looking for some clarification regarding post-study um, work rights. Um, the, the issue here is that um, TEXA, neither TEXA nor ASQA actually have any role to play in making um, visa, visa decisions and those sorts of um, those sorts of matters that sit with home affairs you can be assured that in conversations that we have with home affairs and we have them frequently they are they are clear that is it is our view that we should be supporting our international students including considering the issues around post-study work rights for students who start their studies online uh, we are encouraging home affairs to, 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 to put that in place. But at the end of the day, that decision sits with the, min the relevant ministers and, and the Department of Home Affairs. Um, and so we're really unable to resolve those sorts of specific visa issues ourselves. 
there's a question here as well about the current flexible um, regulatory environment allowing students to study online and offshore. How long do we envisage this uh, will remain in place? From, from Texas point of view, um, then I think um, uh, we, we would say we're going to remain our own, uh, maintain our own flexibility for the foreseeable f future. So the relaxation of, of, of uh, requirements around um, international students and the proportion of their study that they can do online is completely relaxed at the moment. So TEXA has made an undertaking not to take any action in any way in terms of interrupting that, um, that availability. And we will continue to do that until the, 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 the disruption from COVID-19 um, settles. And I think it is um, a bit safe to say at this point that this pandemic has changed everything in a very dramatic manner. Um, so even the future of education sector across the world might be evolving. So we just need to probably keep an eye of, out and learn as we go. Um, and yeah, with that, I'll just ask one last thing to both Nick and Craig. Sorry, I keep saying one last. Uh -huh. um, what your closing remarks to all of our attendees? I'm sorry, Millie, what was that? Sorry, um, so what would be your closing remarks to all of the attendees and all the international students? Well, well first, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all the international students for the patience that they've shown. It's a very difficult time. I mean, I can't imagine what it would be like to be an international student, really separated many thousands of kilometers from family, finding their casual work opportunities um, disappear, uh, finding their studies uh, disrupted. And I, I think you really are the most remarkable and resilient bunch, and you should be congratulated for that. And what I think we all want to see is that uh, this to be resolved as quickly as possible in terms of the you know the disruption being caused by the by the virus uh, we want all for everybody for that to settle quickly and in the meantime you just need to remember that we're here to support you and the vast majority of people working in higher education in australia are really decent kind and committed people and they will help you as much as they can. So if you're feeling lost, if you're feeling alone, if you're feeling that you're not really coping with your studies, you need to talk about it. And you need to talk to the, to the institution where you're studying and seek help from, from those institutions. But you are a great bunch of people and we're a, a very resilient group. Thank you, Nick. Okay, I will uh, say some few uh, few closing comments as well. Look, I'd really like to echo uh, what uh, Nick has said. Um, we want to pride ourselves on being a country that um, uh, is open and... To all the attendees, speakers, sponsors and supporters. Thank you for joining us over the past three days. We have put a lot of thoughts and efforts into this conference hoping to bring you the best experience during this time. We hope that you've enjoyed the sessions as much as we did and have gained knowledge, inspirations and friendships out of this. It is our pleasure to serve international students at CESA. We hope that you will continue to support CESA for years to come from all the execs this year. Thank you.